so glad that you are in church and so glad that you would take time to gather with us. I know the last week, really in particular, um, it is just wild out there in those streets and COVID is popping off and all sorts of things. You've got a busy schedule and the fact that you would take time to, to join us online or be here in the room says so much about you. We're so, so grateful that we have this moment tonight to to gather around the gospel, to gather around the good news of Jesus and just to worship him and reflect on what he did for all of us. And I was just thinking uh, on the way over here, that little phrase during Christmas, you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year. In fact, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I know we're going to church for a moment. Say neighbor. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless... No, you don't have to say that part. <laughs> Unless you got three kids under three. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless you got teenagers who are rebelling in your home. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless you lost your job. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless you're single and you're lonely. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless... <laughs> You have no family here in Miami, and we can just continue to go down that lane and go unless, 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 because all of us have a different story and all of us have a whole different set of situations. And what I've realized about this time of the year is I know it's the most wonderful time of the year, but more often than not for a lot of people, it's not the most wonderful time of the year. It's the most anxious time of the year. It's the most stressed out time of the year. It's the most worried time of the year. It's the most fearful time of the year. In fact, I was reading stats this week that 88% of people feel more stressed out during the holidays. Can I just get a witness? If anyone's out, a couple honest people in church at 5 p.m. Okay, a few of us, few of us, few of us. It's a stressful time. I was reading that 56% of people said they have to bite their lip when they're with their family this week around tables. None of you, of course, right? None of you. Just with my in-laws. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They say that 85% of us will overeat this coming week. Is that true for anybody? Okay, Adrian's the only honest person in church. He's eating right now. Stop eating. No, I'm kidding. There's a lot of things going on, but I suppose tonight what I just want to try to rally around is I want to bring you back to the story that it is the most wonderful time of the year because this is a story where truly joy comes to us in the flesh. And let me just read it for you for a moment. If you've never heard it before, I know we've got many people that are regular attenders here tonight and there's others of you that your family, your friends, your guests to Vu Church, we're grateful you're here. Luke chapter two, verse eight says, and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. I just want to bring you back to the origin story of Jesus coming to this earth. The whole story of Christmas is all about joy. <laughs> Maybe you're stressed tonight, maybe you're anxious tonight, maybe you're fearful, maybe you're worried, but the origin story of Christmas is one of great joy. In fact, the Greek word there for great is the word mega, or another word, monster. Meaning you could literally translate this little word right here in Luke chapter two with the angel declaring, I have come with mega joy for you. I just want to bring back some people tonight because I know you got stuff happening all around you externally. Maybe you've got some stuff happening on the inside of you. But the good news of Christmas is that God announces over your life that he has mega joy for you. There is a reason tonight to rejoice. That word joy shows up 2,700 times in this book. 
that, that God, he, he wants to give you something. And if I can really be honest with you tonight, this joy that we're talking about, Christmas is not about getting information about joy. Christmas is all about getting an impartation of joy. Meaning God doesn't want to just tell you about it. God wants to impart something into your soul this evening. He wants to give you joy. You say, well, Rich, well, how do I, how do I get this mega joy? I kind of walked in stress. We're not ready for, I have to go to Christmas Eve dinner. It starts, honestly, hopefully you're going to be done in eight minutes because it's at 6.15 we have dinner, you know? Some of you, I know you're counting. You're, we're going to be done. How do I get this mega joy? Well, I think the text tells us the first thing to get this impartation of this mega joy is that you have to receive the invitation. Receive the invitation. Notice what takes place. Literally, these shepherds are out in the field and all of a sudden the angels show up and they say, fear not. We bring you good news of great joy. Watch this. For all people. Maybe my favorite little line in Luke chapter two, I wanna remind you that the good news of Jesus' birth is not for a faithful few. It's not for a select group of people. It is for all people. Whatever you have walked in here with, there is an invitation for this joy. It's amazing that it's shepherds out in the field that these angels show up to because if you study history, what you'll learn is that the shepherds they were always, always seen as the lowest form of society because they were out in the field. They were never near the synagogue. They couldn't get close to the temple. They were seen as the bottom of the ladder. But not just that, because they worked out in the field, they were constantly unclean. They could not get near the house of God. But the first group of people that the angels come to are those who are seen in society as on the bottom of the ladder. What is it? It's an announcement that this God, he came to get to people that are on the outside. He came to get to people that are far from him. He came to come to people that many of us would write off. He says, no, I came for the shepherds. This is the good news. It's an invitation. If you want this joy, you simply have to receive the invitation. There is good news for all people. Jesus being born was not just for Jewish people. It was not just for good people. It's for all people. But like any invitation, just because it comes to your house doesn't mean anything's gonna change. You have to receive it. You actually have to welcome it. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son for whosoever, for all people. The impartation begins with receiving the invitation, but it doesn't just stop there. If you want this impartation tonight, this mega joy, you receive the invitation. But secondly, you join the celebration. That's what this is tonight. This is a celebration of Christ's birth. And the scripture says that honestly, that as the angels showed up, that the glory of God shone all around them. In this time period, when, when a king's son was born, they would put, they would burn bonfires. And so all over the city, there'd be bonfires. But in this case, there was no earthly bonfires. Instead, God put some bonfires in the sky. The glory of God shone around them and God's glory, it made them afraid. But the angel said, fear not, fear not. We come with good news. You've got nothing to be afraid of. And the bonfires were in the sky. And the scripture says that all of the angels began to sing. It was a choir in the sky. Tonight on Christmas Eve, I'm asking you to shout and I'm asking you to worship because there was a heavenly choir that began to sing. Well, why was it? It's because in that time period in Bethlehem and places like that, when a baby was born, musicians would show up outside of the place where the baby was born and they would celebrate by playing music. But if you know anything about Jesus' birth, when they got to Bethlehem, there was no room in the place where he got there. In fact, he didn't even get an invite to his own birthday. I mean, there was like no room for him. He was born in a stable. He was born in a stall. 
But I love our God because many times we feel like we're forgotten, but God says, I have not forgotten about you. There might not be any earthly musicians, but I'm gonna bring a choir in the sky. I'm gonna bring a fire in the sky and it's gonna be a great celebration. And the invitation for each and every one of us tonight is to join in that celebration, to join in it. I I love it because in Job chapter 38, verse four, it says this, God speaks to Job. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have any understanding who determined its measurements, surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? See, God is questioning Job in the Old Testament, saying, you weren't there when I created the heavens and the earth, but when I did make the world, all of the angels began to sing. Isn't it amazing that when God first made the world, the choir showed up, but when God remade the world through the birth of his son, the choir shows back up again to say, let's celebrate. There is a new salvation for all people. There's a celebration happening. And tonight, maybe you're stressed out, maybe you're anxious. Mega joy starts when you start rejoicing. Rejoicing is different than waiting to be happy. Rejoicing is making a decision to say, I'm looking at my current circumstance and I have decided that in spite of what I am going through, I'm gonna get happy in my spirit. I'm gonna give God praise because he came for me. I'm gonna join the choir of heaven and I'm gonna lift up a shout of praise because a savior is born. A savior is born. If you want an impartation of mega joy, join the celebration. But lastly, he... The angels send the shepherds and say, you will find a baby in swaddling clothes. So if you want an impartation of the mega joy tonight, receive the invitation, join the celebration, but lastly, experience the transformation. Experience the transformation because a baby changes everything. This little baby, according to the angels, doesn't look like much, but this little baby was a savior for all. That little line, Savior for all, tells us a whole lot about what God thinks about the human condition. God doesn't look down upon you tonight with all of your anxiety, with all of your stress, with all of your worry and say, I know how to solve your problem. You need more gifts under the tree. Maybe you're like, ah, no, I need more money. But God, if he thought you just needed more money, he would have sent, I don't know, like an entrepreneur to, you know, to your life. No, 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 I need a, I need a date, Rich. If he would have sent you a spouse. It, it, Uh, We need a new politician. We need someone new in the the White House. Okay, he would have sent a politician. We need more law and order. He would have sent a police officer. (laughs) We need more justice. He would have sent a judge. We need condemnation. He would have sent a condemner. But when God looked down upon the state of humanity, when he looks at you and I, he says, I'm gonna send my only begotten son in the form of a baby. And that baby will be the savior of all. He came to save us. And that shouldn't depress you, that should excite you. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, I don't need tips. I don't need a principle. I need a savior. I need someone to rescue me. And there in the city and there online and right here in this room, that is what we're gathering around, is that a savior came. His name is Jesus. He was born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes came in the form of a little baby, such a humble start. But he came in this form so that he could recognize and understand all of your pain and all of your temptation, all of your hurdles, all of your hangups. He is not a God who is distant from your pain. He is a God who is intimately acquainted with your pain, with your temptation. He is one that you can trust. He has walked in your shoes. He gets you. He said, I came to save you came to save you in the city. I came to save you here at South Miami. I came to save you online. I came to save you and transform you. It's not a saving from the outside in. It's a saving from the inside out that a true transformation would take place. An impartation of joy would meet you where you are. Happiness is about happenings. 
but joy is given to us because we have a firm belief that no matter what takes place in this life, I have an eternal hope. Therefore, I can celebrate. Therefore, I can praise. Therefore, I can pray because I know I have been saved. I've been saved and I've been transformed. And tonight, I don't just want you to hear the story. I want an impartation to take place. I want you to leave this room different, better, because you know that Jesus Christ loves you and came for you. He knows you. He's for you. He wants to transform your life. At both of our locations and online, would you just bow your heads for a moment? Would you just close your eyes? There's no one looking around. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. And I believe every one of us have a God-shaped hole on the inside. I talked to a friend this week, very successful, lots of accolades. His career is taking off. But he called me saying, I just think something's missing. And I said, I know what's missing. You don't have Jesus in your life. Because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? And this little baby came 2,000 years ago, not for you to be afraid, but rather that you might understand there's good news. What is the good news? The good news is he came to save you. Well, how do I get saved? Simply by receiving what he's already done for you. You can't achieve Jesus. You receive Jesus. You put your trust in him and you believe that the baby changes everything. Maybe this year for the first time, you could recalibrate, you could be refreshed and rejuvenated and recognize that this whole holiday season, it actually is the most wonderful time of the year, not because of what happens to you, but because of the one who came for you. That's how we declare that boldly, that Jesus is at work and he saved us. And tonight in this room at both of our locations, I wonder, have you put your trust in Jesus? Because tonight, he wants to give you mega joy. It is himself. He wants to meet you in the middle tonight, online, here in the room. And it starts by you going, I-, I need saving. If that's you tonight, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. If you've never met Jesus, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, would you be bold and would you lift your hand up high enough and long enough just so I can see it? I wanna include you in this prayer of salvation. I'm gonna count to three. If that's you, city, or here at Somi, would you just be bold and lift your hand up high enough and long enough? Ready? One, Bible says today's that day. Two, don't look at your neighbor, forget about your neighbor. It's between you and Jesus. Ready? One, two, three. If that's you, lift it up. That's me, Rich. That's me. That's me. That's me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I can't think of a better time, man. This is awesome. People surrendering to Jesus on his birthday. You can put your hands down. Church, can we just stand to our feet for a moment? We're just gonna pray a prayer corporately together. Thank you, God. God, give us mega joy. Mega joy, Lord. Monster joy. Great joy for all people, Lord. Thank you for meeting us where we are. As we stand to our feet, both of our locations tonight, would you just pray this prayer out loud? Say, dear Jesus, Thank you for coming for me. Thank you for being born to save me. Tonight, I believe in your story. And I put my trust in you. And I am reminded that I get to join heaven's choir. And I get to thank you for saving me. God, forgive me. I repent and I turn towards you. I want to follow you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Come on, can we just go ahead and just give Jesus some praise? Come on, church, can we just really, really give Jesus some praise? People surrendering tonight. People surrendering tonight. It's so cool. I'm just believing in faith and city that people are making that decision, even on Christmas Eve, just a candlelight service. But that mega joy is being imparted. It's being given to you tonight through God the Father, through His Son, Jesus, and hands going up here in this room. And if you raise your hand, uh, we don't want nothing from you. We just want to come alongside you. The way we do that is by filling out one of these connect cards. Just check off, I decided to follow Jesus. And when we dismiss here in a moment, we're going to have our VU kids come up on the stage. They got something ready for you to, to send you out. But as we walk out, just drop it off at one of the connect corners. That's the white tents at our locations online. There's a space there for you to do that. Go to vuchurch.com slash online. And one of our team wants to put a Bible in your hand. 
It's our gift from us to you on this Christmas Eve service. But maybe you're not ready to turn something in, that's okay. We have a little phrase here at Voo Church that we always say to people. It simply says this, just keep coming back. Come on, how many can testify? Just put one foot in front of the other makes a big difference.